Hello, thank you so much for agreeing to be featured on my channel. Please introduce yourself and like talk about how long you've been writing songs and what instruments you play. My name is Andreas Oberg. I'm a Swedish songwriter, producer, guitar player. I started out as a musician playing a lot of jazz and blues and fusion and then over time I became more of a songwriter producer and I found uh, the K-pop market and also the J-pop market. I've been doing a lot of songs for uh, Japan and Korea during the last couple of years. And I find it very inspiring to, to work with all these artists and, and try out all these different genres. Fantastic. And so now we'll start off with the questions that I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. First, do you think it's more important to make a number one hit or write a song that you are personally most proud of? When I started within the jazz world, it was all about just creating, you know, interesting music that, that, that I really love myself and I wanted a select group of people to really like it, of course, and, and I didn't want it to be too commercial or have any of uh, that kind of pop music impact. But then over time, I kind of realized I wanted to create music for, for the masses, but do something with quality too, you know, that you can bring in cool chords, do something musically that also has the quality of, of, of pop with, with catchy hooks and simple melodies as well too. So I would say I, these days I want to, you know, make big hits, but also do stuff that has musical value and quality. Fantastic. And then when writing a song for a company and an A&R comes in and says, oh, change this up, we don't want this, do you ever feel that they ruin a song? Yeah, that has happened, but it's all about personal taste. And most of the time I think they, they know what they're doing. And, and there are some cases where songs actually turned out amazing from, from their feedback. There was one A&R at SM who actually came in when we wrote Red Velvet song called Sunny Afternoon. And she wasn't happy with the chorus. And we kind of liked the chorus, but she said, no, I want something different. And she had some ideas. And then we started writing a different chorus. And in retrospect, I mean, that, that chorus was, the, the second chorus we created was so much better than the first one. So it's always good when, when, when the A&Rs know what they want. Especially in Asia, they're musically trained. Some have perfect pitch. They, they know about the music and they know what they want too, which is, which is great. Awesome. And what is your favorite K-pop song that you didn't take part in writing? Well, there are a few, you know, there are a lot of great songs, but there are a few, you know, when I heard them, I thought, okay, wow, this is, I wish I was part of this. One is actually Spellbound with TVXQ, a very cool uh, song. And another one, a little bit maybe more unexpected one, is a, a song my, my friends, uh, Cesar and Louis, wrote a song with TTS called Stay that has a very cool key change for the chorus, very unexpected. So I was like, wow, I wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> and what's your favorite genre to compose in? I like a, a lot of the funky, jazzy, R&B stuff where you can go a little bit crazy on, on the chords. Yes, that's my favorite too. And what K-pop artists have you been able to work with in person? I've been writing with Boa, the SM Camps with Amber from FX, uh, Shiwon from Super Junior, Eric Nam, uh, Henry, former member of Super Junior. It's always great to write with these artists and especially the ones that are active writers and they have a lot of ideas and, and, and they have a vision for what they want to do. Awesome. And then what is your favorite section of a song to write? Like is it the chorus? Yeah. Uh, when you get the chorus right is always a great feeling, but personally I like pre-choruses because that's where you can go even more slick on, on the chords and, and, and do some really Weird. unexpected <laughs> stuff actually. So so I, I love the pre-choruses too. Fantastic, <laughs> I can tell. Um, what was the most difficult K-pop song to write? Like whether it was difficult to communicate with the other composers or you just couldn't come up with any ideas? We did a song on, on the Lee Dong Woo album. Um, the original title was Broken Wall. Um, and I think it's Once There Was A Love is yep. the title. Uh, it took a long time to write. We were trying different chords going back and forth. It was a ballad. so. And one of the writers, a Korean writer, he didn't speak much English, we tried to communicate, and uh, it took a long time, but it's a song I'm very, very proud of, uh, the outcome of that song. It's not a typical K-pop song, it's more like a, a jazz ballad, but, but it's a song I'm very proud of. Do you see improvisation ever playing a bigger role in pop music? Hopefully, you know. The great thing is, is when you find that balance between improvised elements and then more like structured, thought-out ideas, for instance, in a verse, it can be more like R&B urban, it can be more of an improvised flow, and then 
the hook could be a little bit more structured for people to be able to grasp it and sing along with it. Right, and when writing a song, do you ever think of a group's international audience instead of just writing for like maybe Korean ears? Well, yeah, since the, the lyrics are for the demos are made in English, we always try to have like catchphrases and, and, and lyrical content that, that could also work in the, the West. When writing a melody for a specific group, do you assign vocal parts based on their jobs, aka main vocal or lead vocal, or do you study their voices and give high notes to someone and fast notes to others. Yeah, it depends yeah. on. I mean, some groups I worked a lot with, like for instance, Shiny. So I so I know the different sounds, you know, of the different voices. Some groups I might not know exactly all the members and how they sound, but I try to listen and see if something stands out. You know, if there's one singer that has a really like high pitched voice or something that you can like use and, and take advantage of when you when you write melodies. Right, and are there any artists that you would like to work with in the future that you haven't worked with yet? Yeah, of course, there are quite a few, especially solo artists. More, of the, I work with a lot of the idol groups, but it would be interesting to work with some of the solo artists in, in Korea. There are a lot of great ones like uh, IU and Hayes. And they're doing their own stuff, composing and working with a group of people. I think they're friends and co-writers, but it would be fun to try doing something for those artists uh, as well, and not just to those the, the bigger idol groups. And do you ever draw from your classical music theory knowledge when writing pop music, or do you more draw from your jazz theory knowledge? More from the jazz theory knowledge. Uh, I try to not overthink too, too much, you know, and, and go follow my ears and what I'm hearing, but it's great to, to have the theory and, and know it as a tool so I can actually, you know, know why something doesn't really work in a vocal arrangement, for instance. And, and I also, since I know the theory, I have a lot of colors available, a lot of sounds that I can use with the different extensions from, from each chord. What are your favorite songs that you've composed? There are many, so it's so hard for me to, to choose, but uh, like one of these nights with Red Velvet, I really like that song, I'm proud of it. I did this song for Shiny uh, called Romance that I really like myself too, like that has kind of a Stevie Wonder Pharrell kind of vibe. I did another one for them in, in Japan called Wishful Thinking, that's uh, another song I'm very proud of. There are so many, it's hard to choose, but those were just a few. What artist or group do you like writing most for? I would say Shiny because I've done so many songs for them. I've done 13 songs for the band, both in Korea and Japan, you know, combined. And then I've done two for Temin and then one for uh, On You together with Yi Jina. So uh, 16 in total, so I think I have a history with that group and I met them a few times. And I like how they sound, I like their use of, of the vocal arrangements and their voices and how they bring my ideas to life. Fantastic. I don't know what it is, but this girl got me feeling all emotional. Let me tell you real quick. Be bad and denim jacket, chum, no kimmy son on. You're not a joy, I had to know that telling a chum. Norbo Jamaja Wenji, Gogan.